All right, welcome back to the channel. Captain Steve Pope here. Today's video, I'm gonna film myself out here on November 9th in Kansas City at Falcon Lakes. 18 holes of golf from the white tees. It's about 6,200 yards. Now that I'm 50 and a half, as the weather started to uh, get colder here in Kansas City, we've moved up that tee box to have a little fun at the end of the season here. So hope you enjoy the video. You guys know what this channel's about, if you've been following me. If not, it's about bringing awareness to PTSD in the fire service, first responder professions. So just stay self-aware of what's in your, in your mind. Let's try to stop these first responders dying by suicide at an alarming rate. But not only that, we need to help our first responders understand the stress that's going through them and not take it home to their families and have substance abuse. Um, Stuff like that. So anyway, love y'all. Jim, you said in one video that it, it adds 40. Oh, okay. All right, I got one, about 190 to this pin. I'm gonna hit the, it's into the wind, so I'm gonna hit the 22 degree hybrid. All right, got a touchy eagle putt here. Tappity tap. Good roll. Thank God that went in, because it would have been five, six feet by. Yeah, but it's in there now, folks. That's a pop-up. Atlanta Braves got this one, folks. And the World Series is over. All right, on this one, the goal is, with the bad tee ball, is I'm just trying to get to the front of this green and have a try to get a two-putt. If I made it to the middle, that's good. I couldn't really tell. I think you're on middle. All right, I got myself up on this top shelf. Surprisingly, that seven iron from like 180 released out of fairway, so. Up, oh, too much borrow, but good pace and on the hole three. All right, like I was saying, you know, when you make a, a bad tee shot where I pop that one up, don't try to compound it with mistakes. So that's what I was trying to avoid. If I didn't get to the green, but luckily it was downwind, then, you know, at least I have a chance to get the par and get up and down for it. But it carried and here we go on the hole three. pin up front today. The guy's cutting something next to me here. Luckily I have the external mic on. All right, we got 106. Pins up front. I got a 50 degree here. 
downwind a little bit, so. Spin back a little bit, uphill putt for birdie. All right, birdie putt here. So I use the line on the ball. I recommend that to everyone that plays, really. Um, I definitely teach that to my high school kids that I coach. They don't utilize it all the time. They get out there and they're in such a hurry all the time. That... All right, uphill putt, see if I can hit it. I think I pushed a little bit, misread it, either way. I'm in for par. So I know I need to I get my right hand too involved with my putting. When I edit all my videos, I see that. It's just something I gotta work on and I don't put the time in on the putting and, and my game really. I just like to get out here and play most of the time. Uh, so anyway, if I could do that, and I know this winter I'm gonna devote more time to some indoor lessons with Imperial Golf. So go watch that video um, with my swing analysis. And I'm gonna have them give me a putting lesson too and get me ironed out where I feel more confident over those type putts. So. Four, still sitting at two under. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my 12 degree. It's downwind. All right. All right. I got 73 to this pin. It's downwind. These are those touchy. Touchy shots here, and good shot, Jim. A little feel shot. It's gonna turn out all right. I yanked it a little bit, but I will have a good birdie putt at it. So, so my thoughts on making this type of video is hopefully somebody can get better by watching and seeing how I play and me describing some my process and stuff like that. Um, but also, if anybody wants to make a comment to make me a better golfer, I'd appreciate that too. So right now, I'm a 1.4, I think. And, you know, in this game, we always try to get better. And that's the point of making this video, something different than my normal videos. Um, I know I do some things and it takes time and effort to change those. But, uh, you know, I just like getting out here on the golf course mainly and not really working on that stuff on the driving range or the short game just because uh, I'd rather play. But, you know, overall, sharing this stuff with you is just a different type of video for, for me to give you and hopefully it helps some of you. Anyway, thank you. All right, got a putt for birdie here. So, like I told you before, I usually line my ball up, but there's, I'm going to see what just the feel and visualizing does here and try to use just the alignment on the, the club head and just the feel for the game. I just didn't borrow enough. So maybe if I lined it up, it might've helped, but anyway, I was just trying something different.
All right, par five, a little saddle, so it helps bring the ball back <coughs> if you don't hit it, a terrible shot. So like that one's right, and it should bring it back, but hopefully I didn't hit it too far right. We'll find out when we get up there from this tee box. All right, 196 out of the rough here to cover on this line. It's like two, 206 to that pin, so got a six iron out of this rough. Let's see if it will fly and it's downwind. Right at it, let's see if it flies. Can't tell from here, cause I'm blind, but it, it, it was struck well. All right, there's the ball mark. There's the flag. So I went through the process right. I'm trying to gauge that six iron. My ball is just over the green. I got a touchy chip. So the negative about that is the pins all in the back and I went over, but I didn't think I could hit a seven iron to here out of the rough and downwind, but you know, again, you got to go through a process and, and try to make the right decisions. It's not always going to happen, but so yeah, you got to go through a process, try to make the right decision. This game's all about luck too. So it, you know, if it works out for you, great. If not, you know, I still got a chip for an Eagle. So, all right, little, little touchy, little <laughs> chip. All right. So I'm trying to use the ground with this bounce, pop it up and let it go out. And I didn't accelerate. Stuck it right in the ground. It was a tough chip, but I didn't execute. So, so Jim's kind of gave me a little putt, a read. So, no excuse, right, boys? Too much pace on that one, huh, boys? Yep. Now I'm sitting there for the eagle. And now I'm grinding for the par. All right. If, uh, hey, you come across a hole like that where you, you hit a good approach shot and you don't execute on the others, you just gotta keep grinding. It's not about, you know, getting upset this game can get you upset believe me but uh <laughs> it's about keep grinding focus on the next shot because you're only good as that next shot that's what i tell my high school kids you can only focus on the next shot that other one's over with so as hard as that is to say or do or actually it's easy to say but it's hard to do you know you have to so All right, hole six, into the wind. And this green, this pin is on the upper tier up there. I know you guys can't see it from the tee box, but that kind of dictates some clubs off the tee sometimes, especially with this hole, you got bunkers on both sides of the fairway where you can, you can get to. But with the wind in the face today, even from the whites, it might be, might not get there, we'll see. So yeah, there we go. It's probably gonna run on this fairway too and this zoysia starts to go dormant. It likes to run, so thanks, Brett. All right, I got one 14-ish. Gonna go down with the choke down pitching wedge and just choke it down an inch, Nick Faldo says, and just swing normal and it cuts about five yards off of it. So it's slightly, you know, kind of into the wind a little bit. It's not helping or anything, so see if what this does. I think it's gotta get down a little bit. Caught that right fringe. I think if it was in line, it, it probably was just past the hole, but all right. Not... So something that I believe in, and Brett just mentioned it, is 
you know, it's not a bad miss. It's all about the misses in this game, whether your wife lets you come out and play or not. No, but, it, you know, you guys know what I mean. So this one's going to be on the fringe. Gives me a chance to two-putt. Uh, didn't put me in a bad spot like on the previous par five, even though I was chipping for eagle, it wasn't the easiest of chips. Uh, so, again, just wanted to talk about the misses in this game and how they can be good or bad. And so that one was a good miss. Love you, misses. Yes. All right, here's where my miss ended up. It was pretty good club selection, so I got that for the birdie. Hopefully from this distance, I could just two putt. So this putt, this is somewhat of a precarious pin position. So I gotta be careful with this that I don't hit it too hard and there she goes. Hold down, hold down. Gosh, just one of those putts, man. She gone. You try to be aggressive and she gone. So as you can see <laughs> where my ball ended up, um, yeah. Let's see if I can just try to make this for the par. I didn't think I hit that one that hard, but obviously I did. Hmm, I thought it went back right, but look at it going left there. So on those pins like that, there's a high school golf coach I coach with, and he works out here at the golf course in the maintenance and the pro shop. And every now and then he sets pins. And so when there's a pin position like that, we call them the Doug pins because that's not a very friendly one there. All right, thanks for watching part one on how I try to play golf. Anyway, I hope you found some of the things I talked about and the way I play can help your game. And again, I'm open to comments, anybody that can help me play better. I know I got things to work on and I'm fine with that. It's just, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I don't put the time in on the range and the short game. I enjoy just coming out here and playing because it helps me decompress. So again, for my brothers and sisters out there in the first responder professions, please be self-aware of the stresses in your life, what's going on. Because believe it or not, I did not realize the stresses from being a firefighter, what it was doing to me in my home life. So having said that, if you're irritable, got a lot of anger going on. There's probably a reason why. And it took me a while to understand that. So I'm just trying to be, put this out there and be real and tell my story and hopefully it helps somebody. It can help even, you know, someone in another profession just fine. So thanks a lot. Love y'all. Be self-aware.